everyone and welcome to the Koala Club podcast, a podcast made by and for international students in Australia. I am Kevin and I am Trang and we talk about everything education, work and lifestyle for overseas students in Australia. Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of the Koala Club podcast. Hello to you Kevin. Hi, how are you? I'm um, good, thanks Kevin. How are you going? Yeah, I'm good, thank you. So, what are we talking about today? Okay, so uh, today we're going to talk about a quite familiar topic that we did sort of talk about it in a previous episode. We talked about it very briefly in a previous episode and we think this one deserves like an episode of itself. The topic would be, should you accept an unpaid internship or not? Mm. Yeah, so if you are interested in internships, we also recommend you going back to our deep dive internship episode. So I'll link it in the show notes. So in that episode, we talked about how to obtain your first internship and how to make the most of it. And we did touch on this question briefly as well. But yeah, we'll have this episode today to chat about it further. And before I forget as well, like if, if you guys have any questions or any topics that you'd like us to cover, whether it's like a, a deep dive episode or a quick question for us to do a quick uh, episode to chat about, then feel free to send us a message on Facebook or Instagram or YouTube so we can cover it in our future episodes. Yeah, for sure. Okay, so unpaid internship. What do you think about this one, Chan? Yeah, so... I think, well, I did an internship in my third year of uni and it was an unpaid internship. And I think your internship that you did was unpaid as well, right? Yeah, that's right. It was uh, an unpaid internship too. Mm, Yeah, I think it's pretty common for there to be unpaid internships rather than paid internships. Do you reckon? Yeah, I guess at least in the international student space. I feel like for uh, local students or, or Australian students, students um, there's a lot more people who got paid internships. But for international students, there are still certainly a lot more unpaid. And the, the concept of doing an unpaid internship is also a lot more common. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And yeah, and I feel like with domestic students, there would be more opportunities like they well, in my days when I was looking for internships or like just work experience in some companies or firms, some would specifically say that they're only they're only hiring Australian residents, so not international students. So I, I felt a little bit excluded at the time. So I felt like unpaid internships were my only option. Um, I think it's a lot more mm. open uh, now. Yeah, I mean, yeah. unpaid internships is still like on the table whether students should accept it or not. And I think the way that I look at it is I look at the benefits that you would get from this unpaid internship and maybe the, the so that's the pros mm-hmm. and then the cons or more like the considerations that you should take before you decide to advance with that unpaid internship. Yeah, that's right. For me... I look at it in a similar way you look at it as well, whereas you do the pros and cons. Um, I think the matter of un- unpaid internship is a question of two things. First is, is the financial situation, your financial situation. And secondly is a matter of principles. About financial situations is, you know, can you afford working for free? If you do, how long can you afford to do so? And then... Is this working for free for a short period of time going to be an investment for your future? Um, is there a possibility that you will land a full-time job after that internship? And then if that is not the case, then what other benefits you may get out of this unpaid internship, like either experience or networking? So like you said, pros, yeah. Mm, yeah, and I guess touching on your point about financial situation, is you also should consider about your study load at this moment or in six months time are you going to do five subjects and and do you have a lot of assignments and essays and exams to get through so it might be a lot of your on your plate 
And plus, yeah, as you said, do you have part-time jobs that you have and they are paid so it's money to support your mm. your living expenses whilst you're studying. So there, there is an op- opportunity cost to not working yep. uh, and then doing the internship and earning and not earning money. At the end of the day, yeah, it depends on how long is the internship. Can you afford to not work two days a week to do the internship for a few weeks? Because most internships don't go for that long anyway, right? Yeah, normally I think it's, uh, you know, between one to three months, I'll say three months top. So when you did your internship, uh, were you working like five days a week for how long? So when I did my internship, it was um, a capstone subject in my last year of uni. So it was required. Um, so that's another thing you you should consider as well, whether the internship is actually required for you to complete your degree. Yep. Um, but when I did my internship, it was a requirement of 16 days. So you could you have the flexibility of either doing it 16 days straight or just spread it out. So what I did was... I did two days a week for eight weeks. So it wasn't too bad because then I could study and work for the remainder five days. So, yeah, I think workload-wise, it was okay for me. But I think your internship was a bit more full-on, right? Yeah, it was engineering. So I think everything, they just make it so, so tough. So it was a three months, like 12 weeks work placement. So you have to do a full-time 12 weeks in order to pass that kind of subject and if you don't have that you cannot graduate so you, you're forced to do it unpaid or not so you have to do 12 months i'm oh, sorry 12 weeks so i did it during like the summer so i did it between like as soon as i finished my study in november so that was my second last year which is my third year so by the end of third year i did three months from around end of november to end of february before I started the, the la- my last year in uni. During those three months, I was working uh, five days a week, Monday to Friday, just like a normal worker would. I didn't get paid anything for three months. Yeah. Well, that does sound intense. So you would have the weekend to get on top of your studies and work part-time if if you still have time. Yeah. Yeah, well, uh, one thing, lucky was in the summer, so I didn't really have to do oh, any study. Yeah, yeah. But but yeah, I do have to like make end meet still. So I, I think I vague, I vaguely remember I work Sunday or Saturday. So I work one of the weekend. Uh, and because it's Saturday and Sunday, I got like a little bit better rate. So I did like a full ta- a full day, like 10, 12 hours uh, work part-time in my normal part-time job and earn just enough to pay the rent and buy food during the week. <laughs> and I like I still leave like one day for me to rest because I, otherwise I don't think I would Work, I can I could work seven days a week for three months straight. <laughs> that would burn me out so quick. Yeah, and and you had to sacrifice your summer holidays too, right? You could have gone back to Vietnam to visit your family. So that's another factor to yeah. consider for for students yeah. is when can mm. you do the internship? Can you squeeze it in the summer holidays or winter break mm. so it doesn't interfere with your studies? Because that could determine whether you you should accept it or not. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah, so the second thing I, I was saying is it's a question of principle. There's a lot of different opinions in this. And some people say that, no, they will never work for free. It uh, doesn't matter if, you know, any situation. And some people would say, uh, yeah, it depends on the situation. And some people would say that, yes, I would definitely work for free. So are you the type of people who really value yourself and will never ever work for free? I think I read it somewhere on a student forum before and uh, there are some people who will have very strong opinions say if you agree to work for free the company who you work for will not value you as a valuable worker because they don't have to pay you so that they think that your hourly work like doesn't value as, as much. Uh, what do you think about this statement? Well that does sound quite extreme. I think you did mention it um, previously and I remember you talking about it but it does sound like in my opinion an extreme point of view because firstly you shouldn't really worry about what other people think of you and I think the benefits of actually working in an unpaid internship far outweigh the all these 
I guess, extreme point of view that they mention because y- you get experience and there's no value you can put to that experience. There's no dollar value you can assign to mm. it. Yeah, I agree. And I guess the other thing that maybe some students might be concerned about and maybe the student's parents might be concerned about is if you work for free and you're not getting paid, would you be exploited by the company? Because really they've got nothing to lose. They don't have to pay you. You're not really an employee. You're just an intern. So they could give you a a stack load of (laughs) papers to photocopy for eight hours or 10 hours. But I don't think that's a common case in Australia. Um, I don't know what it's like in in other parts of the world, but in Australia, I just don't see that being a massive Mm. concern and that being like the practice or the norm. Because previously, when in my old workplaces, when we've had interns, we treasure them like... (laughs) <laughs> we mm. we put a really high value on them and we train them mm. with all we have and really want them to get something out of it. And I think most workplaces in Australia would be like that unless you go to like a super dodgy uh, firm that you, you don't know about. Yeah, that's true. And I guess there are actually companies and probably a lot of them as well that use this to exploit people, especially from international students' background. Um, I, I think the way to avoid this is like try to get the vibe of the company uh, right from the interview or like when you call up to ask or when you go to for an interview. If the company representative, the interviewer, if they really just like really rude or really talk now to you in the interview, you know, like they say like, oh, th- yeah, this is internship here. Yeah, 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 just doing, just an internship. Like if you ask them, oh, okay, so what, what is my role? What am I going to learn and stuff like that? And they just don't want to answer it. And they just say, yeah, this is a job, uh, take it or leave it. Then there's a high chance that they could, you know, exploit you. Um, whereas if they really nice during the interview and they explain clearly it is an unpaid internship, but it is what you're going to be taught, this is what you're going to learn, this is what you're going to help us with, um, this is how long the unpaid internship is going to be. And then uh, maybe they even say like there's a chance that this could lead to a part-time or a casual role, you know, after the internship, then maybe that's a good company to, to do the unpaid internship for. Yeah, that's one of the things that I had down as one of the things you should consider is the actual organization and the work that you'll be doing, whether that fits in with your your goals and whether it looks dodgy or it could be a scam. And and yep. look at the ad advertisement as well. Like, just be wary of like unofficial websites that have internships advertised and it doesn't really specify the company name, but just have a contact number and stuff like that. And because the other day I was just searching for internships just to have a look at what's out there. And I found an internship on this website that's got like loads of internships listed for different companies. It's like a job seeker website, I think. But one of the internships had a 12 month period. I'm like 12 months unpaid. Yeah. Yeah, wow. and I'm like, that surely is not <laughs> legit. <laughs> so that's what I want to yeah advise wow, our listeners months. to just be Jeez. careful. Yeah, definitely. If you see that, that's definitely a scam or, or just trying to exploit you for sure. Mm, yeah. <laughs> okay, so we talk about how to avoid, you know, being exploited. And I was just want to add one note because, you know, to the people who have a very strong and extreme opinion about your self-worth if you're doing an unpaid internship. If you hear a lot of those opinions and you really worry about it, I would say this would help if you would shift your perspective, right? So if the company is not paying your wage, then who is really paying your wage? Because there's always someone who's paying. You, You never really work for free. If your company is not paying your wage, the person who's really paying it is your future self. That's your future self is paying your current self to do work for free so that your future self will benefit a lot, a lot from it. So if you pay yourself uh, wages, I would argue that it is much more valuable than someone else paying you, right? Because you're paying your time, your effort, you know, all that hard work. Um, so I think it's make that unpaid internship is even more valuable than if someone is paying you. So if you think about it that way, that probably could help motivate you a lot to get through the internship. 
Mm, yes, very well said, Kevin. That can sort of link us to talking about the benefits of an unpaid internship. The elephant in the room being you get exposure to the workforce and the company and the work itself and see what potential areas that you could work in in the future. So it's sort of like try before you buy, right? And as you said, like you're paying yourself and your future self will thank you because if you like this experience, great, you got your foot in the door. There might be opportunities for you down the track or now if they've got a vacancy when you're done with your internship. But if you dislike it, you still did yourself a favor because you know that's not the path you want to take after you graduate. So your future self will thank you for not wasting that time after you graduate to find that out, right? Exactly. Better to do something that you don't like for three months than doing, you know, something you don't like for one to two years, you know? Mm, yeah, and find out later and waste that time. So, yeah. So do you want to cover other benefits that you see with an unpaid internship? The two big things I see is first is, like you said, experience. So you get, you know, a lot of the work experience, you get exposure to the industry you are trying to get a full-time job in. And then with that experience, when you graduate, you can use that experience to go find your first full-time graduate job. And it's always much easier to find a job if you have something under your belt already in terms of experience. Even if that's just a three months internship, it's always better than someone with no internship or no work experience at all. So that's the first thing. The second thing I think is very big as well is uh, you get the benefits of networking. So by working in your internship, you actually make friends in the workplace, you make connections, you talk to them, and if you keep in touch, you never know. It may lead to another job for you in, fu in the future. Personally, when I did my internship, I didn't get a job after the internship, and I didn't actually get a job out of any connection. But the, the thing I didn't foresee is I actually get my friend a job, a full-time job from my network in my internship. And that friend is still working in the same company until now. That makes me even happier than if I get myself a job. <laughs> <laughs> mm, amazing. In addition to the networking, you get the references too. Because that's so valuable when you're mm. trying to apply for your first grad role or even roles later down the track, right? You get those references that are really hard to find um, once you yeah, start out in the field. Especially if you do internship in good, reputable company. And, you know, your boss could be one of the very influential people in that industry. To have someone like that as your referee, hugely beneficial for you to find a job later on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, or even you can connect five or ten years down the track and they might be working elsewhere and they think of you as a possible candidate for a, for a role there. So, Absolutely. We start this episode and... I kind of feel that at the end, we're going to give a definitive answer, right? A personal answer. We're not going to leave it like two ways, like, oh, yeah, you can do it, you cannot. <laughs> okay, so it's, it's time to ask the big question. Do you think it, you should do an unpaid internship, Chang? Oh, I think the whole episode, we were we, we discussed both sides, but I feel like we sort of veered towards the answer that yeah, <laughs> both yeah. of us <laughs> um, were heading yeah. towards. So, yeah, I mean, to yep. spell it out for sure. I think the benefits far outweigh the risks or the cons that you might mm. think of. And personally, for me, it got me my first my official grad role. So I think it's, it's very worthwhile to do an unpaid internship. But just look out for yourself. Yep, absolutely. So do your research and, you know, look out for all the things we mentioned. But if you have done everything like that and still on the fence about doing it or not, do it. It doesn't matter how it turns out will always benefit you in the future. Yeah, go for it. And especially for us international students, we don't have as many opportunities as domestic students. Because if you think about it, domestic students probably have network, already have contacts growing up. Like mm. they might have friends of their parents that have businesses around that have already given them that experience as they were growing up when they're 16, yep. 17, 18. So especially for international students, any opportunities you see out there, grab it. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. I agree. So I think that's a wrap up of our episode. If you like this episode, please, you know, leave a like or comments uh, on YouTube uh, or leave us a review. We are on either on Spotify, Apple Podcasts or Google Podcasts. 
Okay, so do follow us on our social media, Facebook, Instagram, or YouTube if you haven't already. Oh, and the other thing is we have signed up for Buy Us A Coffee. We'll link that in the show notes, but it's basically a platform where if you do really enjoy listening to our podcasts, you can um, contribute to a coffee because caffeine helps us create great content for you. So yeah, we would really appreciate your support. Thank you.